So now let's talk about editing and destroying tweets. These tweets are created, they're scheduled, they haven't been published yet, and so we should be able to edit and delete them and kind of cancel them being sent. So let's talk about how we would do that. Well, first things first, we can go into our tweet partial, and if it's scheduled, we can add an edit link to that. So we'll say link to edit tweet, and we'll have our edit tweet path with the tweet, and we'll link to that. That way we have a way of editing this, and we can link to that page. We need to create the controller actions and views for this. So let's go and define the edit. The routes are already wired up because of our resources route that we used. And that way, we just need to now define the edit HTML.erb. Now, in our tweets views folder, we need to create that edit.html.erb, and we can have our edit scheduled tweet. And we can look at the new for some inspiration here because this is very, very similar to what our edit is going to look like. Uh, we have our tweet, we need to render a form for it, and that form is kind of redundant. So we can remove this form and we can say, we'll have it just say render form, and we'll pass in the tweet as at tweet, and then we can define that partial for form inside of the app views tweets folder and paste this in. And instead of using the instance variable here, we're passing that in as a local variable so we can have all of those arguments passed in correctly there. And we can just grab this line and drop it in our edit as well. Now our edit controller is gonna need the at tweet being set. So this is another example here where we're gonna want the set tweet or set resource example. So we have set tweet here, and our at tweet is going to be current user dot tweets find params ID. So we'll grab the ID from the URL. So tweets one is the ID parameter. So we'll grab that, we'll query our database for all tweets that are for the current user that have that ID. We'll get that tweet back, there should only be one, and we'll set that instance variable. And so this is going to be for only the edit, update, destroy, and we can also toss in uh, show here if we decide to add that. We don't necessarily need it, um, but we can add it. So for edit, we don't need any code in here because our before action will set the instance variable. Then it will run our edit html.erb, grab our tweet, pass it to the form. Our form's gonna render out this just like we saw on new. But edit, because we've loaded a tweet out of the database, it's gonna pre-populate this with all the values that we had in the database. So our body has the words testing. If we go into the other one, hello world, and edit tweet, it will have hello world automatically populated in our form. So on the new one, we create a new tweet in memory, and it doesn't have any data in it. So all of these fields are empty or they're defaults. But when we edit one, we have a database record with data in it, and it can pre-populate those fields in the form so they all match. And then we can just simply change what we want and hit schedule. And Rails is actually smart enough to change the URL of our form to either slash tweets for a new one, or keep the ID and tweets and the ID in it for editing one. And the editing will be a value of patch for the method so that Rails knows to go and update instead of create a new record. So now we're gonna need the update action. Our before action here will run on update, so we'll have at tweet. And we can just say if update the tweet with the new tweet params succeeds, then we will redirect to the tweets path. And we'll just say tweet was updated successfully, and otherwise we will render the edit action. So now if you tried to edit your tweet 
and you deleted the body, our validations will still run. And we can run hello2 and update this, and now our tweet will say hello2. So this is all wired up now. We can also add a very quick destroy. It's very simple. We'll have destroy. Our tweet is already set for us because of the before action, so we can just call destroy on it, and we can re uh, redirect to the tweets path. And we'll say tweet was um, unscheduled. And that is all we need to do, but we'll need to add a destroy button. Now I like to add the destroy button inside of the edit form because that allows me to kind of push that in where I'm editing and changing things. And I don't necessarily always want to be able to delete from the index page. So we can go into the edit or we can go into the form and put the link in either one of those. Now the way to do that inside of the form here is we can add an if form dot object dot persisted question mark. This is going to look and see if it's saved in the database or not. And if it is saved in the database, we can have a link to, or rather, let's do a button to um, the form dot object method delete, and we'll have the title of this delete and a data confirm, are you sure? And we'll probably also want some button stuff here. So we'll say button outline danger. So it looks like an outlined dangerous button. Um, we have a syntax error here. So let me go correct that real fast. We want no equals there. And there we go. So now we have a delete. And if you go to create a new tweet, there is no delete button. It only shows up on edit. So we can click delete. Are you sure? If you hit OK, it will delete that tweet. And it says the tweet was unscheduled. So there you go. We now have the management of tweets. And we can jump into actually publishing these to Twitter.